You heard me talking with Kelly about jobs of the future, and I just love seeing this innovations coming from young people. Along the same lines, now I am absolutely delighted to introduce you to Mac Malkawi, who is an entrepreneur and emerging business management consultant. As the founder, CEO, and president of Borderless Labs, Inc., Mac is at the forefront of making steam and space exploration accessible to a worldwide audience, with a focus on Jordan and the broader Middle East. His passion for education and innovation drives his work, transforming analog training missions into engaging opportunities for all. Beyond his business ventures, Mac is a dedicated philanthropist and a compelling keynote speaker, sharing insights on entrepreneurship, leadership, and the importance of global connectivity to make humans on Mars a reality. Welcome, Mac. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, it's an honor to be here again. I've, it's been my third year speaking and my first year actually attending was 2016. And I'll never forget, I think it was this auditorium or the listener auditorium, the podium was over there. I came here chasing Andy Weir. He had just written a book called The Martian and he doesn't travel much. And when, he, when I found out he's gonna be in DC, I was like, oh my goodness, I gotta come to this conference. So I found out Andy Weir was speaking. Then I found out Bill Nye was speaking. And then I found out Robert Picardo was speaking, and I was like, oh my goodness, I gotta, I gotta see these people in person. So I came here just to be inspired by these uh, celebrities and these inspirational figures, and I'm a huge sci-fi fan, so I figured I gotta see them. And while I was waiting for them to speak, I figured, oh my goodness, look at all these wonderful, amazing, smart speakers. And one of them was Janet Ivey, who inspired me to do everything you're gonna see. Laurie Garver, Ellen Stofan, all these amazing, inspirational uh, people. Jim Green, sitting right here as well. Actually, you'll see uh, some of that over here and here we are six seven years later I created Borderless Labs Inc which is uh, Blink uh, which became the brand that is leading the MENA region to the final frontier the MENA region means Middle East and North Africa so I wanted to give an opportunity for everyone from my original region to be just as inspired as I am when I listen to you wonderful people over here. So I see this spacesuit over here, and I think to myself, I grew up, it's my dream to just stand next to a spacesuit like this. So how many people here, the leaders of space in the world, have ever been inside a spacesuit? One, two, three. How many people who would love to be inside this spacesuit? Everybody, exactly. Imagine the people looking, listening to us at home. It's their dream to do that, but if they grow up in a country or were born in a country where that's not an option, then you have that learned helplessness uh, immediately. So I wanted to give them this experience, whether it's in person or virtually. So I started my company, Blink, and I know Eric had this problem where he's hitting next and nothing happens, and then it follows. Oh, there it is. And uh, Jim, actually, you saw this uh, slide because you actually authorized this slide back in 2013 when uh, Curiosity landed on Mars. And I was that kid who got so inspired by art. Uh, anyone agree with the A in STEAM for art? And that's how art turned someone from the other side of the world to be inspired to say, I'm going to replicate that slide. It was actually Cyan Proctor's idea to do it. And we actually, that's our Mars analog camp behind us in what looks like Mars, but it's actually Wadi Rum, Jordan, where they filmed the Martian and all those uh, other uh, Martian movies. And Six, seven years later, now we got the contract. Saudi Arabia actually uh, launched a man and a woman to the International Space Station through the um, uh, Axiom Mission 2. And I think I have to hit this button way before I'm about to move forward. And this is my team. The four of us in the middle are the citizen scientists, astronauts like Shauna Pandya. I was so inspired by her, who actually wears spacesuits and does aquanaut training and all this stuff. So I figured I want to be like her. 
And uh, that's why I joined that program, International Institute of Astronautical Sciences. And I empowered these young men on the right over here, and they built the rover you're going to see. The young women on the left are the women who built the spacesuit you're going to see. And hopefully, you guys can be a part of those challenges as well. So look at this. I'm wearing a costume with a SpaceX-inspired uh, costume, but the gentleman next to me is actually wearing a life support system that doesn't look that much different than this amazing Collins suit over here. And this is in Saudi Arabia where I got to see, meet their head of agencies and uh, them being able to give us the opportunity to empower all of those young men and women who built the uh, suits. And I'm going to move on if I can. Uh, Training with Shauna, actually, here at the International Institute of Astronautical Sciences with the IVA training and uh, uh, Orion uh, uh, sea survival training and post operations. Uh, this is part of my team. This is David and Dara. Dara actually built the uh, uh, 3D printer that went to the International Space Station. And this is when we were doing IVA training. So the one on the right is the sea for survival training. The one on the left is when we were doing uh, suborbital missions. And here I am actually repelling off of uh, Orion uh, mock-up doing sea survival. So how many people would love to get those experiences? That's what got me excited to say, I am listening to here like an enthusiast, and I want to do this stuff. But not only do I want to do it, I want to create the opportunity for everyone here sitting and everyone watching at home that this can be you one day. This is an amazing picture back here because this young woman next to us, Amanda, is actually going to space next month with uh, Blue Origin. And uh, it's such an honor to be a part of a community that's actually training to go to space. And from the EVA training side, I was lucky enough to actually be one of the few people. And Shauna was actually, Shauna, I think, took this picture. And this young lady standing right next to me, it was here on stage last year. And I'm so proud that we we're able to give her and people like her a huge opportunity. We actually do fighter jet training with the uh, Polaris mission. Polaris is going to do the uh, first uh, civilian EVA. And uh, the cool thing about this is when you, f do you, when you fly fighter jets, you fly with pilots. When I fly fighter jets, I fly with astronauts. That's. <laughs> Uh, this is our CEO, David, wearing the SpaceX suit with uh, Jared Isaacman's uh, MiG-29, and this is the Alpha Jet. So these experiences, I never thought some kid from Jordan can be able to do these types of experiences. But this is, these are the experiences. Here's the Polaris mission, and the training we do with them. And uh, last year, you saw uh, Lee came, come here and talk about his mission that went down to Latin America with a plane. So all of these experiences would not have happened, and me joining the class of IIAS, and um, oh, Winston Scott allowing me to bring these scholarships from around the world, and everyone here that is just so supportive. The support that I got from the industry here led me to be just so humble that I can actually give this experience from Biosphere to uh, the UAE is actually building a city on Mars, so I'm very proud to have got the book, uh, book uh, from Mars. How many people here have ever done a zero-G flight? How many people would love to do a zero-G flight? Exactly. That's why we do these things. They're so inspirational. Uh, working with the, how many people have seen the, the SpaceX rocket launch? These are the experiences that I want to give everyone in the world. We give them in person, we give them uh, remotely. So this young woman wearing this suit is a Syrian immigrant who, it, does this suit not look that much different from that suit? I only gave them $2,000 to create this suit and look at the magic that they made. This is me wearing the uh, SpaceX costume in our camp in Jordan. And a lot of familiar faces in the audience here came with us to Jordan. Look at the rover that they built. It's the size of Curiosity. And now we took that rover all the way to the International Astronautical Congress. And there's the spacesuit there as well, where they managed to actually present over 15 papers coming from the middle of the desert, who ever thought that they would have an opportunity to do all this? I'm so humbled that the um, 
Mohammed bin Rashid Space Center sponsored and supported us, even invited us over to say, hey, how can we do this in their country? We uh, hosted Yuri's Night with Axiom Space, and we even have an Apollo Rusty on stage with us. It's such a huge honor. We film everything we do, and we produce it in languages that have never had the opportunity to be inspired by all of this. We won Startup of the Year in the country of Jordan, and we couldn't do it without building and supporting a team. By the way, building a team and keeping it is way harder than building a suit or an analog. I'll tell you that. Anyone in business knows that. But this is how we did it. The X Prize did it with the $10 million challenge, and we're doing it for the $10 million challenge. We're bringing over 2,000 people, 200 teams, six challenges, over 10 accelerators, incubators, uh, and over 100 investors from around the world with six challenges. Millions of dollars and millions of dollars in funding, millions of dollars worth of awards. We are going to create an ecosystem of space startups, space makers, and space investors. And this is what everyone has been talking about all morning. How do we do that? We're doing it with six challenges. The first challenge is a moon and Mars rover design challenge. You've seen my students do it before. I want hundreds of rovers. I want hundreds of space suits. Human health and performance. You've heard the space medicine panel, and you're going to hear Eric talk about it in a few minutes. All these challenges are opportunities. Space medicine, space nutrition, biotech, wearable technologies, space exercise, all of this stuff are challenges we need to uh, learn to... Uh, uh, to, to fix before we go to Mars. Small sat design, you've heard of QSATs all the time, now you have an opportunity to do it. We have spacesuit design, you've seen them do it. Uh, drone design, and my favorite is the Space Entrepreneurship Challenge. Any space startup can actually say, I want to pitch in front of these hundreds of investors, hundreds of accelerators from around the world. They're all coming to the city of Dubai, and they will have an opportunity to say, I am pitching for business, for startup. Um, Axiom did that last year in Saudi Arabia and just raised $380 million. I do it in front of investors around the world. I'll raise the money. Top 100 teams are going to get up to $20,000 each to be able to create these amazing challenges. Let's change the world together, and let's actually make the infrastructure that sends us to Mars. Thank you. <laughs>